Hey everybody, Tom Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. In case you missed it, we've been going through a lot of crazy stuff here behind the scenes on the channel. But we have gotten things straightened out and we are back in the swing of things here. Happy to be back, by the way. That being said, we've missed a lot and we're pretty much playing catch up here at this point. Mainly going to be talking today about the april outlook and we're going to be doing an updated video on this very soon because we're doing this a week late unfortunately like i said some things came up and i apologize for all of the uh things that i have missed which has been quite a lot a week of time is a lot in the weather world but that being said let's go ahead and get into this outlook here and not really too much of a surprise on my end so to speak this has pretty much been the calling card that we've seen over the last few months, which is pretty typical for an El Nino, especially as we look towards spring. The above average temperatures are mainly going to be existent across the northern states, but we do also have those above average temperatures over towards Alaska and over towards the southwest. This is pretty much going to be a continuous trend, and I think this is going to last through a good chunk of the season here, even maybe heading into the early part of summer. So. No real surprises here, but keep in mind, things are always in motion here, and also we are looking over the course of a 30-day average. So not every day is going to have a probability of 60 to 70% chance of above average temperatures. We aren't expecting to see temperatures of like 90 degrees up here, so don't panic. It's not the end of the world. Just want to make sure I got that out there before I moved on to the next section here. But yeah, it's going to be notably warmer over here towards the northern states, especially towards the northwest with the jet stream changing as we get later into the year here. So we'll go back and we'll actually look at the precipitation here. And there's something interesting I want to make note of is this little moisture tongue here that's popped up. While yes, this is a precipitation outlook, there has been talk and I'm kind of on board with this more and more as time has gone on about the increasing probability of activity over towards the Midwest and the Great Plains throughout the course of the spring and into summer with severe weather season. As time goes on, and this is not really a secret if you're in the weather community, we're anticipating a lot more activity towards traditional tornado alley, which is some of these states here like Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, etc. So seeing this moisture tongue here, and typically looking at the way that the Gulf of Mexico moisture tends to usually flow during this time of year, I'm seeing a little bit of a correlation with that, not gonna lie. Like I said, it's just more so theory in my mind, and I don't have a whole lot to prove that, but don't be surprised if you see this area in here become a little bit more active as we get into the back half of April in particular. Like I said, it's really far off, and it may not happen at all, but it would not surprise me in the slightest, especially with us seeing this area below average precipitation over here as well. My concern with this area also is wildfires, but this is usually an area where we have a particular element that's essential to severe weather called the elevated mix layer. And usually with those drier than average condi uh, conditions that can play a factor into what happens over here. So like I said, there are some signals that I'm seeing here that I'm a little bit intrigued by and I'll be keeping an extra close eye on over the coming weeks and even months. Some other areas to make note of when it comes to below and above average areas precipitation. As far as below average precipitation is concerned, Great Lakes. A little bit more concerned about you guys. Really uh, worried about the drought situation over here. If drought has not occurred here yet, which I'm sure it has to a point. This is not going to help things over there. Meanwhile, if you're over towards the Northwest, I'm pretty sure you are welcome to see this below average precip area over here because you guys have been getting walloped all season long. And to see a break in the action, I'm sure is pretty welcome for a lot of you folks over there. As far as Alaska is concerned, towards Southern Alaska, we see an increasing area of above average precip here. So this is kind of an indicator of how the jet streams kind of evolving towards this region because what we see over towards Alaska eventually affects us towards the northern tier of the states and then towards the southern tier. So seeing a trough over here, which is most likely what's going to end up happening, is going to maybe stifle some of these states of some of their precipitation. So moving along here, 
Another big thing to keep in mind here is the shifting of El Nino into the neutral Enzo phase that we've been talking about. We've been talking about this for a while now on the channel. It's been a big topic in the weather community and a big talking point in regards to the severe weather threat as we get further into the spring and even into the summer. So to kind of put this into lamest terms, anything that's above 0.05 here is considered an El Nino phase because the war waters are warmer than average across this region. Anything that's above a 1.5 is considered a strong El Nino. You get to 0.5 and anywhere in between negative 0.5, that's considered a neutral phase. And then anything that's heading beyond negative 1.5 is what's considered a strong La Nina, which is basically the opposite of El Nino, where ocean waters within a particular point of the Pacific Ocean are usually cooler than average. So if we look over here, as we head towards February, February, March, April, you can see we're at an El Nino and a pretty considerable one still at this point. During the winter, it was actually a very strong El Nino. In fact, almost record breaking at times. But now we've started to transition a little bit closer towards that neutral Enzo phase. So we're just now heading out of that March timeframe heading into April. So this three month period is what we're going to be looking at next. And what you want to look for is this solid green and the solid blue line here. Both of these at this point are below 0.05 here. So we are now entering the neutral phase as we go further along into the month of April here. And we're going to further transition beyond that as we head into summer into a neutral phase and eventually even into a La Nina. So I, like I said, I would expect some big changes with the weather as we continue to go forward here. But just something to really make note of, we're going to start to see a notable difference in our weather as we head into this month, particularly. So April might have some big stuff going on with it. So keep your eyes peeled. If we were to go ahead and take a look at what we could be dealing with in regards to our temperatures from a little bit more of a finite basis, we're going week to week with this setup here. Obviously, it's kind of hard to cover each day from a 30 day period. If we go on a week to week average here, we're in what's called a negative PNA. So with a negative PNA, we have these warmer temperatures out to the east and then these cooler temperatures out to the west. And that's gonna pretty much be the dominant pattern for the month. You can see that cold air really starting to take hold as we head towards the middle of the month. Could be a little bit of lingering cold air left over for the southeast, but this is not gonna last very long. Like I said, and then of course, like we saw with the outlook map here, warmer than average temperatures, particularly over towards the Great Lakes, not really helping a drought situation at all, but definitely something we're gonna keep note of here. Then as we continue to go forward, we start to see that warm air continue to persist over the central part of the country, kind of leveling out a little bit as we head towards the back half of the month. And then maybe as we head into May, we might have a little brief cool down before we start to shift back to that negative PNA once again. So there is indications at times where we're gonna have flip flops within the pattern. But for the most part, a lot of that warm air is going to be mainly contained to the north and then eventually over to the east at times. We'll get some warmth here and there over towards the west, but overall, I think that we will be mostly at average or maybe about 10 to 15 degrees cooler at times. And that's what and that's with me saying that at maximum, most likely. We aren't going to see too many extremes or I wouldn't anticipate it at this time, but as we know, Looking into the time frames that are this far out, things can change and can change in a hurry, honestly. So as we continue to go forward here, we're going to actually go ahead and take a look at the precipitation anomalies here. And of course, over towards the northeast with the way the current jet stream is set up, we can anticipate increased activity over towards the northeast and over towards the far southwest over towards Cali and maybe Arizona. Also, Utah, and Nevada, we're having increased rainfall over here towards this region. But watch how this changes as we go into next week here. We have this drier even over here towards Texas, and but watch this. 
look how we're starting to see that increase in precipitation over towards the Gulf Coast states, the southeast, and then towards the far northern tiers of that region that I was telling you about towards the Midwest and the Great Plains here. See that increase of moisture over towards the north. And then also this dry area over towards the Great Lakes. As we continue to go forward, we see that continual shift in the pattern. So if I were to kind of take a look at things, and this is just giving me kind of a rough estimate here, I can I would anticipate a lot of ridging here. And this is probably going to be a god awful drawing of what the jet stream could be like. But I would expect a lot of troughing within this region here. This is my best representation that I can give of it, and I bet you will probably give me an F for it, but that's fine. But I would expect increasingly dry conditions over here and increasingly wet conditions over here as we continue to go forward. But that being said, we continue to go forward. We do see a pretty good representation of that. Now, keep in mind, that's not going to that crappy drawing is not going to be what the jet stream looks like every day, but this is just kind of a rough sketch of what I've, I'm kind of seeing. And keep in mind, we actually have two jet streams that we look at over here. One's going to be further up to the north, and we're going to see more ridging towards this region up here, especially north of the border. So it's going to keep things kind of dry over here. But we will have a couple little waves and undulations over here that will a lot for some precipitation, albeit not much. But overall, though, that's pretty much the general picture that we're going to have here for the U.S. as we go through the next 30 days and beyond here right now. Keep in mind, we will have an update video where we get a little bit more in depth here within the next few days before we close out this month. And then, of course, there is severe weather to talk about in the short term. So make sure you have the bell on so that way you're notified of all of those videos and much more. But that being said, appreciate you guys being here. I will see you guys very soon. Until then, it's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care. Have a good rest of your evening.